So Hell's Paradise has been a show I've been keeping my eye on. I've heard quite a bit of buzz about this one, and honestly, I'm quite happy to report that based on the first episode, this one is probably going to live up to the hype. It was beautifully produced, it was engaging from start to finish, and the story hook and character motivations are pretty damn sharp if you ask me. You have a man who basically can't die, or I guess I should say, has a will to live that's so deep down inside that at face value he wants to die, and whether a sword comes down on his neck, bulls try to rip him apart going two different directions, or he gets burned alive, he walks out of it pretty much unharmed, and you have a quest that if succeeded, he will get a pardon that will basically, you'll be scot-free. No crimes, no punishment, and you'll be able to start again with his wife. However, this quest is to go get an elixir of life. And all things considered, it seems like a quest to hell. As anyone who seemingly has gone to get this elixir comes back floating in a boat full of flowers, and let's just say, they're not too alive. This one was a very fun surprise. I was expecting a fun action series just based on the trailer. The opening kicked in. It had like four different versions of the opening it felt like as it shifted and dropped different beats. But very quickly it showed me that this is a show that's definitely trying to show that it's character focused first and foremost. And there's honestly a lot of surprises within this first episode. Now I do have a full live reaction to this wonderful first episode available on my Patreon. So if you do want to see my full uncut thoughts you can head on over there and consider supporting. As yeah this one and Heavenly Delusion are going to make Saturdays an amazing day of the week for this new spring season. So right away I was very surprised by how the voice actor for Gabi Maru who is the main character who's basically basically on death's doorstep the entire episode, was handling his performance. Usually when you have characters who seemingly are okay with death or basically they can't be killed, I kind of feel like they're a little more emotionless or they go into the edgy territory a little more than usual. But he kind of felt like a character who didn't really give you the impression he was a badass, but he didn't give you the impression he was a wimp either. He was just so out of it. He was so just ready to go, but just every time it seemingly just wouldn't happen. Obviously, over the course of the episode, we realize that it's actually him. He had the will to live. When the sword came down, he flexed his muscles so hard, the blades literally ruptured. It's just really cool to see how they have this, like, fancy element to it, both with his durable body, but also by the end of the episode, he uses his ninjutsu and literally becomes the Human Torch, and we don't even see what he did. All we see is the aftermath of him chilling on a mountain of corpses. It's pretty badass. But I like the idea that he's the narrator for a good majority of the episode. And anytime you have someone narrating their own life, narrators can be a little biased or they can be covering up truths, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And he married the daughter of the man who basically, seemingly, I mean, it could have just been a freak accident, maybe some bandits, but it kind of looks like this man killed his parents and took him as a baby. If not, then therefore he just, he found the baby and took him in. And the idea that he married him off to his daughter, and the daughter has a bit of a tragic past herself, the fact that the father literally burned her eye because... God forbid he she do anything he doesn't completely approve of. The fact that at face value he's saying that he married an idiot. He married this woman who just, she made me take off my shoes or pray before eating and all this other stuff. But then by the end of the episode you see the truth of the matter. He wasn't betrayed because he tried to get a divorce from this man's daughter. No, he was betrayed because after growing accustomed to actually a loving bond... This man had the audacity to say, I want to live a life that isn't covered in blood, that I can make an honest living and make her happy. And that made the father basically betray him and set him off and we see how he ended up. It's pretty insane to say the least. You have this like fantasy element in terms of elixirs of life, a body that is so just inhuman that it's insane to see what he's able to deal with damage wise. And the fact that he, the bursting of flames and doing some cool moves. There's going to be a lot of exhilarating action. This quest is going to be a mixture of beautiful and demonic. I mean, the location that they went to that they teased us, it literally looks like paradise. It looks like something that you would assume heaven is. But the fact that anyone who goes too deep seemingly comes back corpse filled with flowers. It is going to be a dark, twisted, and emotional journey that's going to wear its heart on its sleeve seemingly. If you really look at the show's MAPPA has done over the years, you can see all the different influences that has kind of crafted the visual style of this show. And I really enjoyed it. I think the facial expressions on Gabi Maru as an example were really interesting. So often there would be these moments of shock, like especially initially when he gets put into the room where everything gets dropped on him, like, hey, here's a pardon. If you work with us, you get a pardon. The fact that there's this way they go about animating his eyes and the way his face, it doesn't respond as if his jaw's on the floor or 
he's his mind has been blown but it's enough to say like you really feel like this is a character that is way more complex than he's letting on and then over the course of this episode and especially by the end you really get to see what type of man he wants to be. I mean, it's no wonder a baby who is raised under a man who has no problem burning his daughter's eye or, God forbid, the man who you gave her hand in marriage to wants to give her a peaceful life is a bit of a psychopath, meaning he obviously raised him to be more of an emotionless killer. But the fact that the wife ended up really breaking through to him, showing him loving embrace, I mean, it's interesting to see the complex family relationship that was there and it's understandable why after, over the course of this episode, which was basically all just about torturing this guy, trying to kill him but seemingly nothing works, by the end you see he's a man who has the desire to live. It's just, at face glance, he himself believed that he wanted to die, but really, you know, he wanted to get back to his loving wife, and that's the only thing that matters to him. I love how this episode is a bit of a roller coaster without necessarily pulling plot twists out of anywhere. The biggest twist is that the story that he was telling about his wife turned out to be that it was actually a lot more loving and the betrayal wasn't because he wanted to dump her, but more so he wanted to give her a life full of peace and freedom. And I like the fact that this episode was all about showing who he is as a person. In terms of his VA, I love what they did. I think the character design, similar to the VA, doesn't feel edgy, doesn't feel badass, but doesn't feel weak either. It's just in that nice middle ground. So when he does those crazy demonic things, you're, wow, what are we seeing? But then when he's just in his normal talking stages, he, it's just like, it's a different character than what you expect at face value for a seemingly immortal character or someone very close. I mean, it took until the end of the episode from this woman to basically cut him a little bit. Had he not moved, his head would have come clean off. So he's not completely invincible, and the elixir of life is probably the only true way to be truly invulnerable, but it's going to be interesting to see where they take this show. It was beautifully produced. I think the animation went in when it needed to. While yes, they definitely gave us a bit of a tease with the action, they show him light up, but they don't show him doing exactly what he did in order to get that pile of corpses. But I'm interested to see when it truly does pop off action-wise what it's going to look like. I mean, it's not often you can have a first episode where a character gets attempted to have his head cut off, burned alive multiple times, and have bulls try to rip him from the crotch upwards, which is probably the worst way to go if you ask me. But this episode definitely delivered on the excitement. It had a character focus first and foremost with an interesting side of world building, and by the end of the episode we know where the plot wants to go. Quest for the elixir of life, an emotional journey probably of a man who has a lot of complex feelings in mind, and it'll be interesting to see where they take this. Obviously, I highly recommend Hell's Paradise. I think it will definitely be one of the stars of this anime season, and Saturdays are looking to be rather good, but thoughts and feelings yourself down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. Be sure to ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload on the channel, and as I mentioned, I do have a full live reaction to episode one, and I will be covering all this show over on my Patreon in live reaction format if that interests you. So, till next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.